X-Planes. Chances are, if you love aviation, there's a special place in your heart for the history of America's cutting-edge experimental aircraft. From the X-15 to the X-29, many are beloved by enthusiasts. Some, however, like the X-43, don't receive nearly as much recognition. As you might know, I love building gliders and unique designs, so I thought, what would be a better way to honour the X-43 than to make a profile RC glider? Really, if you think about it, the design is actually very similar to one of these. Man, the wind is bad today. Okay, so I have all of this black foam board left over from a project where I built a B-21 Raider glider over Christmas with my cousins. Uh, we might see that in a video one day, who knows? But yeah, so I've got this foam left over and I was thinking, well, let's use some of this and make the X-43, right? Because it's a predominantly black aircraft. So, I mean, it gives us a good colour scheme. This line I've drawn in the, in the dust, yeah, it's very dusty, I should clean it, um, signals about as far as we can go in terms of the width, if I do it this way. So, looks like we can do about 25 centimetres as the width. That is a good dimension for us to start and design the rest of the plane from. With the plans designed and cut off screen, let's get right into the build. While that's happening in the background, I thought I'd tell you guys a little bit about the history of the X-43. The X-43 was a 230 million US dollar experimental unmanned aircraft developed jointly between NASA, Langley and Armstrong Research Centers. After a failed first flight in June of 2001, a second successful flight in March 2004 saw it become the first aircraft to ever achieve hypersonic speeds on an air-breathing engine, utilising a scramjet engine in flight for the first time in history. Very basically, a scramjet is a supersonic ramjet. Ramjets were a form of jet propulsion lacking any turbine or fan components, with the air ramming into the inlet, undergoing compression and deceleration as a result of forward motion and inlet geometry. Scramjets, on the other hand, don't slow the air and instead undergo combustion and compression with supersonic air, which posed a monumental engineering challenge. While ramjets are generally capable of operating in the Mark 3 to 6 range, scramjets are envisioned to be capable of speed in excess of Mark 15, making them a very promising technology for the future. After the third and final flight in November of 2004, the X-43 set the prevailing record for fastest air-breathing aircraft, achieving a top speed of Mach 9.8, which I assure you is substantially quicker than what we're going to achieve in this video. Right, well that's about all the history I have for you today. Conveniently, the build is nearly done, so let's move on. Right, so as a glider, the, the plane needed some sort of launch mechanism, and the obvious easy choice for me is a bungee launch system as you see with many gliders, you know, uh, like an elastic sort of band, a shock cord with some fishing line for example you know, stretch back with your plane hooked on, let go shoots it off, so yeah, I got to building on that and let's uh, see how the testing went. Okay, so we're here at the park with the triumphant return of Adam, haven't been here for a while, thank you for being with us mate, it's good to see you. So today uh, I've got a nice little old Kmart glider out here so we can test my first ever shock cord based um, aircraft launch system that we intend to use on the X-43. So I reckon we'll just give it a go, see what happens. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, sure. Let's go. So I'm back out here again with version 2 of the uh, bungee launch system for the gliders. It's uh, got better knots tied up here, better knot tying it to the ground, better knot over here, and this is connected to, uh, where did the line go? God, this thing is invisible. There we go, a piece of fishing line, quite a strong long piece. It comes over here to a key ring that hooks onto this new 3D printed hook. So, we'll see if this makes any different. I still need to add a parachute to it at some point so uh, the hook properly detaches, but we'll see what sort of success we get out of this this morning on a quick test. Right, so admittedly that, that was quite brief. 
Uh, I do have quite a lot of footage of, of both days of launching the glider on the bungee system. If, if people are interested in like a sort of casual, sort of more lo-fi video, just letting the footage from those two days just, just run, uh, let me know and I'm sure I could get that sorted. But in, in the meantime, uh, the next step is to try and test the X43 on the bungee system. Right, so the wind's a bit low this morning, so I thought I'd take that opportunity to come out nice and early. I think it's like six o'clock, sun's still coming out. Jeez, it's a bit bright. And uh, we're trying to evaluate the appropriate center of gravity for this little X43 that I built. I've got the control surfaces taped down as you can see, and I've got some coins taped on the nose, so it balances around, there's a line just beyond the little 20 cent piece that you can see. Um, can't remember exactly how far from the front that is at this point, but I've got a couple lines I marked on there that were some options. But well, yeah, I'll you know fire it off from the bungee launch system, and yeah, I'll just have a little bit of a play around, try and figure out where it balances well. Okay, so I've set up the uh, bungee launch system just over there. That yellow thing sticking out of the ground. We're facing away from the sun, hopefully, so we get some good footage. There's essentially no wind as far as I can tell, so it doesn't really matter direction. I'm pretty happy about that. And yeah, so that's the X43. Probably launch it off that little hook there. This is just a little 3D printed piece. Um, but yeah, we'll give it a couple tests to see how it goes and figure that roughly where. I've taken off the rear coin. Bit sunnier now. I've uh, taken off all the tape and I've replaced one of the 20 cent pieces with I think a 10 cent piece yeah that's a 10 cent piece so if it was nose heavy not going to be any more hopeful okay that's hilarious that's objectively hilarious Okay, so what we're seeing there, when it gets up to speed, it's actually flying well enough. Turn it up a little bit and go. That was really cool. Um, I'm going to put it, I'm going to move the coins back just a little bit. So I've moved the coins back. You know, a noticeable amount, as you can see. So we're losing the nose pretty quickly, as you can see. The collisions would be okay if it wasn't for all the moisture. So we're going to run out of plane very quickly. But I'll give it a couple more because I, I do think it comes down to speed. Because this isn't a very big, as I said, it's not a very big wing area quite small I uh, obviously you know it, I'm, I'm not 100% certain about the wing cube loading on this but I, I don't imagine it would be particularly favorable I believe it would probably have to move quite quickly to get the lift it needs uh, so yeah we'll just do it again see if we can get it faster I actually lost a coin on that collision, so I've replaced it with my own, the other 20 cent piece I have hanging around. Whoops. So this will probably be one of the more final flights. I've taped it back on. I didn't know exactly where it was. I just got it roughly somewhere. It's not very, you know, it's not a very uh, strong tape thing. When you get that speed going, it flies really quite well, I think. It's just, it just, it needs to get the speed going to actually get much lift with that wing area, is sort of my assessment of the situation. Sorry about the, the lighting. Um, yeah, so before I destroy the plane, I probably want to get it home and figure out roughly where the center of gravity is 
right now because I, I do think once it gets up to speed, it's performing fairly admirably with with where it's balanced right now. I'm, I'm quite satisfied with that, honestly. I just don't think I'm going to be able to get much more out of it currently with its size. Like I do believe with that sort of wing area, it's it's going to need to go a fair bit quicker to really get much in terms of impressive flight performance to, to get the lift it needs to lift, you know bring its weight up um so yeah we'll just get it home and get it balanced i think the you know step for the future is make it bigger okay so it doesn't seem particularly viable to try out this specific model with servos as an rc glider since it already requires quite substantial speed to achieve any sort of notable flight performance and even then it's very limited so extra mass is probably going to make that a lot worse and increase the wing cube loading and, you know, require greater speeds. Um, so as a result of this, this is sort of the natural conclusion to this video. And, and all up, I had a, quite a lot of fun making it. I think this plane performed quite admirably, and I've determined that the appropriate centre of gravity is about 193 centimetres from the nose, which is about 39% of the total length. I think in the future, a scaled-up version of this plane could make quite a fun RC glider or powered model, so it's good to have at least an idea of an appropriate CG. Well, yeah, I, I sort of, I guess that's it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the project and all the new sort of video elements today, like the little history lesson and that weird intro. Remember to let me know in the comments if you want to see the more casual, ambient sort of video with all the uncut footage from the many, many glider tests. Once again, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos I'll have coming out very soon. Have a wonderful day.